frame. Thanks to Greg next door and my buddy Brent. It is here. Man, it took a little bit to wrestle it on and make sure that the holes were drilled. And you know, just needed to finagle it a little bit, but it's uh, it's on there. What we did is we put the aircraft down on the tail, as Tom suggested, and that was a great idea because it, it didn't give us that far to bring it up, but 120 pounds, you know, and, and what, it wasn't too bad once we got it on the root tube, then you could just uh, stick a bolt in and adjust a little bit and it would hold the weight of it. But I'm going to go ahead now and uh, put a sawhorse underneath the tail and bring it level and start unpacking it, unpacking the wires. battery came today um, and uh, which I'm really excited about because now I can start getting the electrical system all together here um, we got this here 12 volt 18 amp 18 amp hour um, it's awesome and what I'm doing now is just kind of fabricating the battery tray or the battery holder here so that one's already done from before sorry for moving the camera quick and then I've just got these extensions I just fabricated off of just bending the metal down I'm gonna drill a hole in the middle there and then that goes in right about there. And uh, the one on the other side with the shelf, I'll, I'll cut that shelf right there. I did a little bit of filing just so it's not so sharp. Um, I'll put a uh, one inch screw in there that I got and uh, we'll get this, get this thing mounted. Another thing real quick I can show you as well is I finished the throttle assemblies. Um, I tightened up the throttles uh, you know, here so they're real nice and stiff. But what I did was I, um, I got these things done. So um, I put a little bit of uh, duct tape on there so that it won't cut you because there's, um, there's some sharp cable coming through there. But there's uh, two thimbles and some Nyko press sleeves and there's two of those and they come down here through the fittings. And so when I come back like that, it's at idle and I go full throttle, these are adjusted. So it opens up the, uh, the uh, pistons in the carburetor there, the throat of the carburetor. So then what I'll do is I'll do some standoffs on these things and uh, tie them up off of here and um, off of this, uh, this tube right here and then off of this tube right up here and uh, that should be done with the throttles. So, um, and then from there, today I'm gonna also mount the um, uh, regulator as well as the solenoid right here. That's how Mike had these things set up. Another thing I have to kind of undo from what Mike did was I, talking to Matt over at Rec Power, I have to um, take out <clears throat> the, um, uh, the um, uh, spark plugs and I have to take off the anti-seize compound he put on there because two strokes don't get anti-seize compound uh, either on the exhaust system or in the spark plugs on the spark plug thread so I've got to clean them with acetone and uh, hopefully uh, it hasn't been the threads haven't been overstretched if you do put anti-seize on there when you tighten it down to 108 foot, uh, inch pounds you can tend to over torque them or over tighten them and then that's bad so it'll stretch the threads and you need new, two new cylinder heads so hopefully um, 
that I know in a video Mike did put that on there so I've got to undo that and hopefully you know it's only been run four hours and it shouldn't hopefully make a difference on the engine um, but just be aware of that um, I also ordered today two new uh, air filters for the carbs so I just have them taped off right now and uh, I also ordered um, a new fuel pump so the fuel pumps come and I have all new fuel lines and I'll do those I did decide to do all the new fuel lines on it it's probably better get a new fuel pump and I have my ELT it came so I'm gonna to try to mount it on the back shelf and I'm gonna to try to mount the the antenna internally because you can with fabric or composite airplanes so as long as it's gonna fit all in there I have to test it to see if it will I'm gonna do that thanks for staying with me all these times all these videos it's fun stuff it's coming along all right here's the uh, bracket completed just a little extension right there because <clears throat> it was long Battery's long, and then uh, you see it goes in there. Nice. And I'll put a strap around it, and this way. So, looks a little top heavy in some ways, but fits in there nice. It's just a little bit taller. Maybe because some of them are 14 amp hour, and this is 18 amp hour, I don't know. I thought I, thought, I, thought I saw somewhere 14. But uh, pretty excited about it. That's in there. So, one less thing to do. All right, I sort of semi-mounted my solenoid in the back. I've got uh, the bottom screw, and um, I'm going to remove this. This is what the previous owner used as uh, um, to mount the throttle cables to keep them still. I use the fittings down here, like we're supposed to do. So um, that's fine. I mean, you can do that too. That's okay. It's just um, it was before the fittings came, and then um, I also mounted the. Uh, regulator rectifier back there. So I'm going to tie wrap everything get it out of the way. Another thing I did is I connected the um, the battery positive up there to the start. I mean the starter solenoid to the battery. Uh, what am I trying? I'm tired. <laughs> to the starter. So um, that's good. And then also ran the CHT and the AGT probes to the top. I haven't connected anything but I just ran them up to get them out of the way. And then I ran these down to the um, down into the tube down there. Uh, and what I did is I did it on the opposite side because if you, you, you want to do it away from the ignition. There's my ELT, my ACK ELT. Uh, I'm going to mount it right there. I'm trying to figure out where the antenna placement should be. I thought about mounting it inside the little compartment um, back here, but uh, I think that having the ELT antenna so close to the gas tank is probably not a good idea. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But anytime you have communications around gas tanks, not a good idea, especially in the airlines. So. Uh, well, another, I guess other options would be either on top, um, on top there, or uh, but you really want to put it to the aircraft surface. So if I could mount it to the boom tube, I could possibly do that. But then again, you got to watch out for the prop, prop wash back here. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put that. Uh, so I'm checking with somebody who, um, so he he installed the same ELT or very similar ELT there. Uh, and then for with the ELT also comes a couple other things. You got this. Um, you got the antenna, you got a, um, the buzzer right here that's going to be mounted behind the um, instrument panel. Then you have on the instrument panel itself the um, uh, the controls. So there's a placard in there. It'll say on and then test. So good stuff. This this was a pretty good price for what you get. You get everything except for the battery for this and the battery for this. I think this one's a Duracell uh, C2. It's like a three-volt battery. And then this one is a... Um, I got an Energizer A544, which is a, um, I, I don't know, I guess it's a six volt battery. And I think that's a, that's how that's gonna work. And then it comes with coaxial cables and uh, like the telephone cables. So anyway, did all this today and then also mounted the, uh, the, the battery up here like I think I should before. So I'm pretty excited, I got a lot done. CHT cables, EGT connected in from uh, Mike Heights previous. Uh, you can watch his videos on YouTube. He's got videos from nine years ago, really good stuff. And uh, that was his engine. Here's an update on just uh, some wiring. Wiring, wiring, and more wiring. So you can see here, I got the ignition switch, uh, more of it wired out. I got the ground in the middle. Um, I have the, uh, this is the uh, starter line there. I've got the battery line running through the 15 amp circuit breaker, which will then run out to the battery. Um, this is the rectifier charging um, wire. And then I have the 
Um, I still have to wire up the Hobbs meter and that's just going to come straight to the battery. Uh, another thing I did was I did a, a, just a trial run of the transponder. So you could see from the controller my wiring harness that I made. Um, and there's some ground and power wires right here. They're going to go through the circuit breakers. And then this is going to kind of wire around the launcher on. I'll, I'll tie wrap it off um, or, or, or do something like that or clamp it. Probably tie wrap it. Uh, <clears throat> and then it comes into the GPS receiver. I, I decided I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna probably uh, either rivet it, you can rivet or bolt it. Um, I actually did secure my transponder, so that I uh, secured to the, the mounting tray to the bottom uh, plate right there, to the bottom sheet metal. So the wiring harness fits, um, thankfully. Everything, all the measurements there came out, so I have room to spare, and, uh, and I'll tie wrap everything off and make it look neat. So that'll be tie wrapped on this side. Most everything else will probably, uh, well, the EGT cables and the CHT cables right here are going to go on that side because the ignition wires are going to run on this side. You're supposed to keep them separate. So that'll come over that way. And uh, some other things I did were um, I worked a little bit more on the starter solenoid by attaching it up at the top. And um, I grounded some things off right here, like the regulator rectifier ground here to, the, to this, which grounds it to the frame up here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Sorry, my video editing, I'm just carrying my phone here. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's what I've been working on today. Oh, I also uh, changed the seatbelt position here, like I think I mentioned before, so I put that underneath the, uh, that's gonna be a much better position, nice and tight around the uh, front pilot and away from the rudder pedals for the backseat guy or gal.